Well, thank you very much. Today we're gonna, we've had amazing lectures uh, all from all day long and uh, from analyzing different points of view. Uh, today we're gonna talk a little bit about management of complex skull-based meningiomas. It's just like a, some kind of insight analysis of, of a few of a couple of cases. Uh, thanks a lot for for uh, for being part of this amazing group with such uh, great lectures and Dr. Same for 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 the invitation and also with John Bennett uh, for organizing all this together with Dr. Same and it's amazing all the the what you guys been doing uh, sharing all the knowledge all around the world. Well, uh, I was thinking about it and just asking myself, which is a complex uh, meningioma or skull-based tumors? We've, we are surrounded of so many difficult cases and how in a way we can define what is complex. Is it large invasion? Is it a sinus uh, invasion? Is this posterior fossa tumors? Is it the uh, crazy tumors that go and explode in a way after radio surgery or different cases? And so we have many different cases, but how, what is important for young generations? What is important about all this? Sorry. Okay. And so uh, one, of, uh, one of all of these is the preoperative planning. Okay. Whenever we have a trouble or, or, or we define it as a, complete, as a complex tumor, it's, it has a lot to do with the, the, with the operative planning or the inadequate sometimes for operative planning. That's one of the points. What do we do? We have to study a lot. What, what uh, obviously in our courses, what we do is that we study uh, skull base from three different points of view that it's defined in a way for open uh, skull base surgery for the corona sinus, posterior fossa, it uh, accesses like, to the transpetrosal approaches are all and also endoscopic approaches. So what is it that we have to do? We have to have a complete, for young generations, I think that we have to have a, a complete uh, um, study of the skull base, analyzing the different, the different uh, uh, angles that we can have in, in, the, in the complete perspective of the skull base in a 360 degree fashion. This is part of our residents in our lab doing some skull base approaches, endoscopic approaches. So it's very important that they have to have the access to endoscopic and to microscopic techniques and continue their training always. I'm sorry for the noise. And this is something that we simulate in our lab that it's like a live cadaver, we call it. In a way, this is our fellow working and dissecting the sylvian fissure. But all of the sudden, you don't know if it's really in the lab or is it really in the OR because of the of the um, live cadaver that we do with the uh, simulating the Abud model, and so it's very important to have all those techniques and 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 share them with 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 the young people. Also, all the complex anatomy understand the different phases and the cranial and all the cranial points which are going to be very important, not only in the skull base, not only in the surgery, but all the bony landmarks is very important to understand the landmarks in order to uh, have the knowledge and the understanding of what is the best approach that we can do. Obviously the skull base, we can use, we can study it in, in without uh, the, just in an anatomical fashion, but we have to understand the different relationships and we have to get in our in, in with the with the dissections we have like a 3d gps in ourselves that we have to know this the 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 anatomical landmarks and the position of of all of these in order to during surgery have a better result we have to know the knowledge of the skull base as as i've said previously in a complete fashion from all or all around it from extracranial, intracranial, different angles, and we have to understand it completely in order to be able to analyze each case thoroughly. 
I will never get tired of saying that we have to have the complete, we have to have the complete uh, uh, training we either with, uh, with uh, microscopic and also with endoscopic techniques. Nowadays, we have to dominate both techniques and we have to be able to offer to the patient whatever of these techniques is needed for that patient, not what we can do. So it's very important. Excuse Always. Me, excuse oh. me, Diego. Diego, your yes. screen is not full screen, and your the slides are not moving. Oh. Okay. Just you need to put it on full screen. At the bottom there. Okay. Try again. I didn't want to interrupt you. Sorry. Yeah, and no, I'm sorry. Is this good right now? This full screen now, is that the proper screen you want? Yeah, sure. Okay. So as I was saying, we have to dominate both techniques and we have to offer the, the patient what we, what the patient needs, but always remembering that the basis of all of our practice, it has to be always the micro neurosurgery. It doesn't matter what technique you are using, always the microsurgical uh, techniques utilizing the anatomical concepts, the microsurgical magnification, and the refined movements in order to have a, a complete, uh, a, a complete uh, um, dissection of, of each case. And um, what is going on here? Okay, so going again to the issue about, for example, preoperative planning that I was saying and all the knowledge that we have to get, for, for example, in this case, it's, it's a meningioma that doesn't seem to be as, as uh, complicated or as complex. I'm sorry about this movement of the patient, but it, it is a meningioma with enough space, we have to know that there is there can be some relationship with the uh, anterior, with the middle cerebral artery. What is it that we do? It's just like in the lab. We go and in the OR, we do um, uh, the cadaveric, we do the dissection and for the patient, we do a normal regular terrenal craniotomy. It's very important uh, to, in those cases, to, um, it, the tumor is already here, so the implant, and so it's kind of bloody, but once you get cleaned up and you devascularize it, you can start continuing the technique, for example, in this case that we are doing an extra dural dissection, in order to, we know that it's a sphenoid wing meningioma, and so what we do is we devascularize it, always what we do is, is uh, exposing the, the orbit as it is seen here. We can see the anterior clinal process and the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus. Doing this, I know that my tumor is going to be completely devascularized. And so in a way, I'm uh, getting ahead of it and, uh, and taking out that, uh, that possible complication. Then after that, we go and we open the dura as, as we are doing here. And now that we can see, we can see that we have a devascularized uh, tumor. In this tumor, I like that, even though it's not as, as, as complex as we would say, but it has different, different pearls for, for, for young people. It's, for example, the technique that we have to use in order to open the sylvan fissure or to dissect the... Uh, to dissect the, the tissues, uh, it is very important. And so one, the first thing was to devascularize the tumor, then opening the fissure. And as we can see here, the, at this point, it is very important to identify uh, the, the middle cerebral artery in order, as we can see it there at that point, and that is very important because, because this, these tumors are going to be in very close relationship. Now I know where my middle, my middle cerebral artery is and, and, and we can have in a way a vascular control that we know where it is. Then we can continue dissecting the tumor. 
we can continue dissecting the tumors that is seen, uh, is seen here. And at this point, I can identify that the tumor is starting to be kind of adherent with, my, with, the, with the cerebral artery. And so it's very important that we have to have good surgical technique, that we have to be careful in our moves in order not to lacerate or to have a, uh, a vascular rupture. So at this moment, we, are, we put in a retractor and we can see the bifurcation of the, of, the, of the carotid. And we can see that the tumor, even though it didn't seem in the, in the MRI, but it's part of the preoperative planning that I was talking. We, with our fellows, we have to, uh, even though we have many cases, for example, uh, and, but we have to be very careful with the preoperative planning and getting ahead of one of these uh, possible problems. In this case, what we decided is to, to do a little bit of debulking, even though it seemed to be very accessible, but in order to have a better control, a better control of the artery. As we can see there, it is very, very adherent. And it was, it was uh, uh, I'm sure that this could have been a tragic for if we didn't have an adequate preparative planning. For example, in this case, we are trying to dissect it. We can see that it is really, really adherent. And we could leave a, a piece of the tumor, but in a way it's, it's, we have to, to take advantage of the microsurgical techniques in order to uh, just leave a very small, uh, thin wall attached to the to the to the to the artery, as we can see here. I'm sorry, I'm going to get a little bit ahead, but that is the. If you are wondering, no, we did not have a, a vascular rupture. We managed it in in a way just to leave around the artery a little bit uh, of the of the uh, a very thin wall. And then at the end we could uh, at the end we could remove the tumor and have a complete removal removal of the tumor. So it's very important to have the the microsurgical uh, techniques and the anatomical preoperative planning and the patient did okay in the post op. And so uh, that was the preoperative planning. Also very important. Sometimes we talk about such big cases, this and that, but we, can, we forget about the condition of the patient. These can also be something that is very, very important. For example, we received recently this lady, a 56 year old lady with a terrible uh, uh, tumor, foramen magnum meningioma with severe brainstem uh, compression. And the thing is that when she arrived to the, to, the, to the emergency room in her hospital, she, was, uh, she had a severe quadriparesis and, and very bad management of, 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 uh, of, of, uh, of liquids. And so they had to intubate her. And as you can see, this is just at her admission. She was uh, intubated. She, she had severe quadriparesis and it was uh, uh, the poem, the, the, she had uh, some long uh, uh, trouble with the, with the liquids. And so that is a very bad condition for the patient. What is it that we did? We, we, she was sent to the, to the ICU, some, but at the same time, we have the, the, the severe uh, rush into operator to decompress the brainstem because she was in very bad shape. And so we do the same thing to, that we do in the, lab, in the lab. We go and dissect, do a far lateral approach, identify the vertebral artery or the posterior arch of C1 and remove it. And we do the same thing in, in the OR. Uh, in this case, we decided to put her in a sitting position and we do the same type of incision and we identified the vertebral artery as it is shown there. We do identified uh, the condyle and we do uh, uh, 
uh, uh, uh, drilling of the condyle all the way enough in order to have enough space. And at this point, we are identifying, uh, we are opening the dura, very important to have enough uh, wide dissection of the arachnoid as, as we are starting to do it here. And at this point, we identify completely the tumor. We can see the 11th cranial nerve coming down and we identify the tumor and we can start doing some debulking of the tumor in order to, to, to work, uh, to have a safer or easily move, move in order to identify the other cranial nerves. At this point, we are starting to debulk in small pieces as it is possible. As you can see that the exposure is very important and the retractor has to be in, in a direction from down, from below to up, okay? In order to have a, a, a good, uh, to have the amygdala uh, uh, moved in order to have a wide exposure. At this point, we're identifying the dural ring from the, from the vertebral artery, and we can see that the vertebral artery is in our way in order to, to identify well the origin of the tumor. And so what we do is that we, something that it's uh, very important is that whenever it's needed, for example, it's, it's important to mobilize the, the vertebral artery as we are doing here in order to be able to attach, to attack the, the, the origin of the tumor. For example, at this moment, we are mobilizing it and then we, what we can do is that we put, uh, I'm gonna go a little faster, that we put a, a, a retractor of the, of the artery in order to have a wider, a wider exposure. We're identifying the lower cranial nerves there, doing the complete uh, dissection. And as you can see here with this mobilization, now I can see better this, origin of the tumor. Now we now I have a complete uh, view of the origin of the tumor. And that was my, my in a way, something that, that it's really re shown in this case that mobilizing the artery can have and will give you a better exposure of the dural attachment. And so it's very important. And then we can continue. We mobilize it upward now. And at this point, we can continue with the dissection, uh, with the dissection of, of the tumor. At this point, we are starting to see on the other side, the 12th cranial nerve, the contralateral 12th cranial nerve. And we can continue identifying, and we can see the, the, there, the hypoglossal nerve, the, the ipsilateral contra, uh, hypoglossal nerve, and we continue with the removal of the tumor, as it is shown here. And at this point, we continue the debulking. There's the 12th cranial nerve from the other side, from the contralateral side. And this is very, very important to keep a clear uh, uh, surgical field in order to identify the cranial nerves. And at this point, we can remove this part of the tumor and we have a completely decompressed uh, uh, cranial cervical junction and we can just co uh, coagulate the, the residual uh, in, implant. And so the patient in this, in this mo at this moment, I'm sorry, she recovered, she's doing well in the third day and later on, I'm sorry for that. And later on, after a week, she completely improved the, 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 her hands, uh, her movements. And so it's very important. And the post-operative MRI with the gross total removal of the tumor, as we can see here, the pre-op and the post-op. And that, that was also for the condition of the patient. And what about the condition of the tumor is another point is very important. For example, in this case, 
the condition of the tumor, she's a, a, a the patient that is, is intact. And so in this case, for example, it's, it's a, 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 a neurologically intact patient with this severe tumor, what do we do? It's, it's also a complex situation. In this case, we had a pneumatized apex. And so we were concerned about drilling and doing the petrosal. What is it that we do? We go back to the lab, which is very important. And we plan in the lab, what is it that we're gonna do in order to have a, a, um, an adequate reconstruction of the, of the, of the approach. And we come with, the, with this pedicled flap that is going to be from the um, with the muscle and it's going to, to be uh, attached to a sternoplated muscle. And so that we do in, in the same thing, we do it in the lab and we go and do it completely in the OR later on. So it's very important to, to have this uh, dual thing where uh, we practice in the lab and then we do it in, in, with the patient. We do this kind of, of, of incision. We do a posterior petrosal approach initially, uh, doing a supra and infra uh, tentoric craniotomy, as we can see here. We have the semicircular canals. We have the sigmoid sinus, the tri uh, Troutman's triangle. And at this point, what we do is that we, uh, it's very important in this point to identify the middle meningeal artery as we are seeing there and to coagulate it and cut it in order to uh, have a little bit of, of dissection uh, from posterior to anterior of the cavernous sinus as we are seeing the, the, the V3 and right now exposing the uh, posterior medial triangle of the middle fossa. At this point, we see what we were expecting, the pneumatized apex, and we know that that is going to be our limit. We're gonna try not to, to make it so big, but it was something that it was planned in the pre-op. And we continue with the drilling of the, uh, of the anterior petrosal approach. As we can see here, we are exposing the, the anterior petrosal approach and the posterior petrosal. And this is the way that we like to open the dura, starting from the posterior fossa to have some CSF out, to coagulate and cut the superior petrosal sinus, and continue the opening of the dura all the way to the anterior petrosal approach. As we can see, here we are exposing the, the tentorium. It's very important to open it all the way back to the free edge of the tent. And it's also very important to identify the fourth cranial nerve there in order to have a complete opening of a, a complete opening of, of the tentorium. At this point, we are completing, we're completing the, the, the opening in the anterior petrosal. We can see there the complete trigeminal nerve, which is very important that it has to be I like to say it's unlocked in a way, because at that point we can work on either side of the trigeminal nerve. So at the way, at the end, this approach is more like going through the trigeminal and not, as you saw there, the seven and eight complex. And so that's going to be to, that's going to allow us not to have a post-operative uh, uh, facial nerve, uh, dysfunction in the post-op. That's the sixth cranial nerve as after we have the, the removal of the tumor. We continue, as you can see, mobilize through the trigeminal nerve, removing the tumor, identifying the basilar artery. The fourth cranial nerve is intact there. And at this point, we complete the reconstruction. We complete the reconstruction uh, with some muscle, with some duragen, and with the pedicle flap that we practice uh, at the beginning of the surgery. And we can put some fibric glue, and that's the reconstruction, and that's the post operative, immediate post op MRI with the gross total removal. The patient in the immediate post op, as you can see, she was 
she had a sixth cranial nerve, which completely resolved in three months. And so at the end, the conclusions are a thorough analysis, a preparative analysis of each case is crucial. If you're not comfortable doing, uh, uh, if you're not comfortable with, the, with, with that case, it's very important that you get close to, to your mentors or to uh, or someone to close to your, that has experience in order to have and offer the best thing for the patient, either open surgery or endoscopic surgery. That doesn't matter, it's, what the, it's the best. Then multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary work is very important. It's very important to create a good uh, team. And also lab work, lab work, lab work is, we'll never get tired of that. It's very important to do a lot of lab work and to have a good team of fellows and friends in order to have some, uh, this is part of our courses that we do here in Mexico City. And our next course is going to be on microsurgical technique. It's going to be on bypass. And so it's more to develop the, the microsurgical technique and whenever we need uh, bypass is very important. It's going to be in live cadaver is what, what we call it with some bumps. And uh, thank you very much, Dr. Same again and John for, for the invitation. Thank you.